Assalamu alaikum. You're listening to Serenity and I'm Yasmin Mujahid. Inshallah today we're going to be discussing um, tackling inshallah a topic which we all inevitably will face at some point in our life and it's the concept of pain. It's the concept of um, what is you know the purpose of pain is does pain have a purpose and if so what is the purpose and also um, about coping with pain and and I think that once we understand and I think that so much of how we cope with the things in our lives uh, so much of it has to do with perspective and understanding the purpose behind uh, why certain things might happen or um, why we encounter certain things in our life and um, in talking about the concept of pain I think it's important to note that we have to unlearn a lot of what we are taught in society uh, basically society teaches you that you're never supposed to feel any amount of pain in fact society um, teaches you that you're supposed to constantly be in a heightened state of bliss um, and the reason for this is it comes from a very um, God, sort of, you know, God is taken out of the picture. The hereafter is taken out of the picture. It's a very um, world, world, dunya centered paradigm. And what that means is that you, if you believe that this life is all you have, if you believe that, um, you know, this is the only chance you're going to get to experience happiness, to get the things that you want, to reach success, then you're going to want to maximize. Uh, you know, pleasure or um, happiness in quotation marks, because the definition of happiness, of course, becomes limited to um, worldly or physical um, happiness or um, material happiness. Um, but the idea is, and 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 the whole problem, um, this this problematic um, concept, it comes from the 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 mistake in that um, you believe that this is kind of this is all we have and so because that is the root of this of this concept um, as a result the 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 message is that you should never um, have to feel any amount of pain um, and any amount of anything less than you know ultimate bliss and happiness and if you do. Um, you need to sedate yourself. You need to distract yourself. You need to take a pill. Uh, you need to you somehow, um, you need to sort of uh, just treat it. Treat, and this is where it's very important. You need to treat the symptoms. Uh, so, you know, if someone comes in um, and, you know, someone comes to a doctor and, and tells them, you know, I've been kind of down about this or that that I'm dealing with. Um, and, and again, this isn't to say that there is no such thing as clinical depression. There's definitely, um, you know, s situations where, uh, you know, pain can become completely paralyzing. And, and obviously there are clinical cases, but just the whole idea of that you're never supposed to be sad um, or anything less than happy all the time. And, you know, and that you're never supposed to feel any pain. And if you do take a painkiller, you know, if you do take an antidepressant. Um, the idea here is that pain is not part of the norm um, and, and it, it never should be the case. And the reason why this is problematic is that everything that we have, every um, emotion that we're given is is given to us with a particular purpose. Now, of course, the problem comes when it goes to one extreme or another. Um, for example, um, the the emotion of anger uh, is not without a purpose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this emotion for a particular purpose and, and it's intended for a positive purpose. So, for example, um, this 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 emotion might prevent you from being um, abused or um, taken advantage of, or it, it will it will motivate you to get out of situations, perhaps, or try to change situations which are unjust. And and so, in that sense, that anger can be a motivator for good. But at the same time, if that anger um, is out of proportion, or rather the anger controls me instead of me controlling the anger, then that's when you have a problem. And it's the same thing with sadness. It's the same thing with pain. Um, so the pain itself, and, and, and I'll use a physical example. If I am, um, you know, standing, say I'm standing um, close to uh, a flame of some sort, you know, I'm, I'm by the stove or something and I turn around and maybe like um, part of my, my, my elbow or something, it, it kind of touches the flame or gets close to the heat. 
what what is it that makes me and I'm not looking I'm not aware of it because I've turned my back what is the thing that makes me remove my arm is the pain is the fact that 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 fire creates pain on my skin and my pain receptors tell me um, to move my arm and so in this this is in this sense the pain is is a protective measure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives me to tell me there's a problem you need to make a change and it's exactly the same thing with emotional pain and 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 with psychological pain that that yes if i am feeling pain um, rather than just trying to numb it i need to figure out what it's telling me I need to figure out what is it that I need to be changing because the pain is there for a reason. The sadness or the, you know, that, that sting that I feel is there to show me. It's an indicator to something that's wrong. It's an indicator to a change that I need to make. Um, and, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, for example, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ That um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never changes the condition of a people until they first change the condition of what is inside themselves, until they change what is inside themselves. And so if there's something painful about my condition, there's something painful about my, about, um, you know, what I'm, the, the, the state that I'm in, it is a motivator to make me change internally. It's an indicator that there's a problem, that there's something missing or there's some change that I need to make in the same way that the pain of the, of the fire is what makes me remove my arm. And you think about situations um, where that pain isn't there. For example, um, sometimes with diabetics, um, because of the diabetes, it numbs, you know, like, for example, a lot of times in their feet that they won't feel, um, you know, if, if they get hurt, they won't be able to feel it. And actually what happens as a result, what can happen as a result of this numbness is that the that the limb itself or wherever the injury happens can become so infected that it actually has to be amputated. And and so the idea here is that because they don't have thou, those receptors, they've numbed it so much, they don't realize there's a problem that needs to be treated. And it's it's exactly the same thing in in our spiritual life. It's exactly the same thing um, at an emotional level. Uh, if if we, um, for example, um, we, our our natural um, our natural inclination is to want to recognize. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's we, every human being has the natural fitrah. The natural fitrah of the human being is to, is to recognize, um, it, you know, tawheed. It's, it's, it's the, um, it's to recognize and want to be close to one God, to the one God. Um, and this is the God of all, you know, all humanity. And, and the idea here is that this is already in our nature. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, for example, that um, before we came into this, you know, this form of existence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took a covenant with us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, Alastu bi rabbikum, am I not your Lord? And all of humanity, not just Muslims, but all of humanity responded and said, Bala shahidna, that indeed, and we, we bear witness to this. So we have within us this covenant that we've made with God, that we realize that he is our Lord. And so this is our natural fitrah. This is our human nature that is already in us. What happens is, when we move away from that nature, when we move away from God, uh, it creates a pain because we're moving away from our own nature. It creates a sense of, of pain and um, emptiness and, and sadness. And so we can respond to this pain in one of two ways. One is we can look at it and say, why is this happening? Um, why am I feeling empty? And try to search for answers and try to, and try to make the pain um, should be, you know, a directing us towards the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But, but the other option, which is what most people end up doing, is you try to treat the pain rather than treat the cause. You try to numb the pain. You try to distract yourself. So that's why we jump from, you know, from one thing to another, trying to fill this hole, trying to, um, you know, just, just make me not have to feel 
um, anything. Even if I don't have to feel anything, it's better than having to feel this emptiness and this this hole um, and, and, and therefore have to figure out how do I treat it. And so what we do is we go through our lives um, running after one one thing after another, whether it's, you know, we throw ourselves into things and we seek, um, you know, we seek things in this dunya, we seek other people, we seek, um, you know, our jobs, our careers, um, we, you know, music, alcohol, drugs, all these things are just trying to do one thing. And that is fill this empty hole. And that hole that's there um, is there because we've moved away from our um, our spiritual roots, which is our nature to be close to our creator. And um, as a result of that, it's like we're, we're um, trying, we, we numb the pain. And so what happens when we numb the pain is that that emptiness eats at us more and more. And it's kind of, um, it's like that, it's like that infection. It just grows and grows and grows until, you know, the heart itself can become, you know, so sick that, that eventually it becomes just dead. And so we talk now about um, hearts, which are dead. Um, these are the hearts that they don't, you know, they're so, um, you know they've been so alienated from their from their own nature of being of near their creator that they don't even notice it anymore it's it's just your um you kind of become like um it's it's a person who's walking around um and it seems like they're alive but all but actually they're dead um and that's because the heart is is dead and because it doesn't have that which which gives a heart life um and that is nearness to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and um, I just want to, um, Chola, before the break, um, give you this this example, which Subhanallah, it it came right, you know, right at the right time. It was just yesterday. Um, I was having a halakha, and one of the sisters she shared this. Uh, actually, this is a true story. She she sent me the news article. Um, she said that there was um, a guy, and he came to the dentist because he was having um, pain in his in his tooth, and. He went to the dentist and the dentist told him, um, you have an infection um, and so you need antibiotics and painkiller, you know, pain, a painkiller to, um, you know, help you deal with the pain, but antibiotics to actually cure the, you know, the, the original problem, the, the root cause. Well, the guy did not have enough money to buy both. And so he had to choose. He had to choose either the antibiotic or the painkiller. And he chose the painkiller. So he chose, okay, I just don't want to deal with this pain. Um, I'm going to choose that over actually curing the, the actual sickness. And the man actually ended up dying as a result of the infection. And this is a true story. So subhanAllah, I just, I felt like this was, you know, this is so, um, it's a deep story. Um, because really, you know, at a, at, at, a, at, a, at a spiritual level, this is what a lot of us do. And inshallah, we'll take a quick break now. And when we return, we'll continue talking about uh, pain and um, its purpose. Assalamu alaikum. This is Yasmin Mujahid, and you're listening to Serenity streaming live on One Legacy Radio. Uh, we're speaking today uh, about the topic and the concept of pain, and um, you know, is is pain something that um, has a purpose, or is pain just something that we, you know, it's these stumbling blocks that we have to uh, sort of just get out of the way um, in order to enjoy our life and you know, get on with our with our life. And I and I and I really um, want to emphasize and what what we've been talking about this you know thus far is is that we really have to do a lot of unlearning uh, of the concepts that we have grown up with in this society and, and basically just humanity um, you know has this concept um, and is is that uh, because this you know a lot of you know the the paradigm of this being our only life. Uh, it leads to the idea that we should never have to encounter pain. Uh, and, and it really comes from this concept of this life having to be a paradise. Um, if you think um, and you reflect on the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, who says that, um, that this life is a paradise for the disbeliever and is a prison for the believer. And subhanAllah, this, this hadith is, is, is so profound. And I think a lot of times we, 
um, we might misunderstand or limit, you know, the, the meaning of the hadith as being, um, you know, we think like when we're kids, you know, our parents tell us everything is haram, 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 right? And so we think, um, we, we, we grow up with this concept that, okay, if we're going to be Muslim, then everything is haram and, you know, the, the, the non-Muslims get to have all the fun, but, you know, we're just going to deal with this and then we get our fun in the hereafter. And I think that, that, that that's kind of the concept that we get, you know, um, and, I, and and maybe this is even the way that that some people interpret this hadith but subhanallah i think that the the meaning of this hadith is like really so much deeper uh and and it's really that first of all the idea that that you know as a believer um that means that your life is going to be harder than than disbelievers or that you know you just can't have all the fun and everyone else can is completely wrong um the 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 true and this is what we we know from both experience um and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us this the true happiness the true enjoyment the true um really like um, contentment uh, of the heart internal happiness can only come if you're a believer and, and can only come um, through that relationship with our creator, that, that the physical, uh, I, you know, sort of, you know, external type of pleasure or happiness isn't, isn't the real thing that you can have all of this so-called uh, fun and all this, you know, all these, these things, but internally you still feel that emptiness and internally you still don't feel happy. And I mean, there's nobody can, can claim that, you know, having money and status and, um, you know, lots of, you know, being able to do whatever you want. And that, that isn't what buys happiness. Um, happiness is something at an internal level that, you know, um, can only come and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us this can come through the, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the nearness to God. Uh, and so, it's actually very opposite um, where, you know, the idea is completely wrong that um, they get to have all the, you know, all the happiness and we just have to suffer. It's, it's really the other way around um, that, you know, Allah, for, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for example, in the Quran that um, whoever turns away from the remembrance of God, um, we will that for that person is a, is a life that's narrowed down a life that's sort of um, it's it, it doesn't have it, it, it's it's sometimes translated ma'ishatun donka is what the ayah says man arada an dhikri fa inna lahu ma'ishatun donka that whoever turns away from my remembrance for them is a life that's narrow or miserable so it's actually you know that the true happiness is through and only through um, the nearness and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa taala. So that isn't, you know, the message that the that, that we're getting from the hadith, but rather uh, when you look at uh, what what you're comparing it to. So if 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 for me, if I compare this life to Jannah, for sure, this life looks like a prison. Right. Because there is no comparison between, uh, you know, this life where obviously I have to live and I have to die. I have to I mean, I will I'll laugh sometimes. I'll cry sometimes. I'll, I'm going to feel pain. I'm going to bleed. I'm going to you know, this is this is a part of life that nobody can can ever claim that they can avoid. Um, and, and if I if I compare that to a life where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, first of all, never ends, there's no death. Um, second of all, that there is no fear on them and nor is there any sadness, no, no sorrow. Can anyone claim that they ever, no matter what amount of status you have, no matter what amount of fame you have, no matter what amount of money you have, you can never claim that you can escape these two things fear and sadness that you will never have to feel fear and you will never have to feel sadness you can't do that in this life and so when you compare this life to the hereafter that's when this life in comparison to the hereafter and to, in comparison to jannah becomes a pair it com becomes a prison and beyond that if you think about what is a prisoner what does a prisoner feel like well, a prisoner is someone who has to be in a certain place for an appointed term, but they'd rather be home, right? The, a prisoner is basically waiting for their term to finish and, you know, they're doing their time. Um, but the prisoner's attachment is to going home. The prisoner is, is always kind of waiting to be released in order to go to a better place. So for a prisoner, they're in a place that they need to be for an appointed time. 
but there's, they know, they know very well that there's a better place. They know that there's a place they would rather be than where they are now, but they are where they are for an appointed time. And so this is the mindset of a believer in this life where we, we are in this life and we live this life. And, you know, nobody says that you, you should be miserable, but rather it's the other way around that, that the true contentment comes from that um, attachment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life. And, and there's, you know, the, the statement of, of Ibn Taymiyyah who talks about the paradise, his paradise being in his heart. And that, 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 um, that, 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 that you can find a paradise in this life even before the next. Um, and one of the other statements which I love is that he who does not enter the paradise of this life will not enter the paradise of the next life. And when you reflect on this statement, you, you, you'll you understand that um, those people who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those are the people who enter the paradise of this life. That is the paradise of this life. It isn't, you know, um, hanging out at the bars or the clubs or whatever it is that people try to do to, you know, find happiness or to find pleasure that's not the paradise but in fact um you know that's the true prison um because you're imprisoned for, you're 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 distant from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so uh looking at this uh this hadith uh you know the 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 believer again um although there is a paradise of this life which is only in the nearness to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, they're still, they still know that there's a better place, a place where, um, you know, they can actually be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala physically and we can actually see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and you have no, um, you know, no sickness, no, no sadness, no fear. And so, and so the comparison here is between um, this life and a better life. But if you look on the other hand at the one who believes that this life is all you have, and so when you think that this life is all you have, it better be a paradise, right? And, and when you think about a person who is in what they believe is a paradise, that person would never want to leave. That person would cling to that place. And this is exactly how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the disbelieving soul. That when that soul is taken out of the body at the time of death, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it as an naziat, that that, Allah, that 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 soul has to be torn out of the body because it thought it was the best, it was already in the best it gets. You know, if you think this, this is it and you think, okay, this is the best it's ever going to get, I better make the most of it. So then you don't want to leave because you thought you were in paradise. You know, it's like the happiest place on earth, right? Disneyland. It's not really the happiest place on earth at all. If you sit and reflect on, you, okay, anyway, when you sit and you watch the kids at Disneyland, a lot of them are always screaming and I feel like it's like so so overstimulated that anyway but the idea is it's supposed to be the happiest place on earth um and and when you're there um you're never going to want to leave right if you're if you're already in the happiest place on earth wherever that really is you're never going to want to leave and so that's the concept of of the disbelieving soul leaving this life it doesn't want to leave and that's why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when that that when that that it's it's talking about this the the angels that rip those souls out of the body because they don't want to leave and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the believing soul when that those souls when they are taken from the body they just flow out um, and the reason is um, if you go back to the analogy of the prison which was the analogy of the Prophet them. what happens when you're, you know, you're an inmate and you're in prison and then your day comes where your term is over and they come and they're opening up the cell. How many people are going to say, no, actually, I want to stay here. Actually, um, I'm going to hold on to these prison bars and I'm not going to let go because I kind of like it here. You know, nobody's going to say that because they know that outside of that prison is a much better home that outside of that prison is is the real life um and so that's really the the you know subhanallah the beautiful analogy that the prophet sallam gives in this hadith where he says that the believer um in this life it's like a prison and for the disbeliever it's like a paradise and so you know again understanding this and and really realizing how we have to unlearn these concepts that um you know pain 
uh, sadness, happiness, laughter, tears, all of these things are are given to us for a purpose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not do anything without a purpose. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, you know, high above doing anything without a purpose. I can, uh, you know, do very random things with no purpose, um, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't do that. Allah is high above that. So everything He gives us is with a very particular purpose. And, and that includes um, our pain. That includes sadness. Uh, and so... The question then is, how do we cope uh, when we are encountered, when we do encounter pain, we do encounter hardship, uh, you know, loss, uh, that that first and foremost, we have to understand that this does not mean that, first of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is angry with us. This is also a concept we have to unlearn, that, that, that the idea that um, trial or test or hardship only comes as a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If that were the case, then that would mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a'udhu billah, was punishing his own prophets. Because if you look at the lives of the prophets, they were the ones who were tested most. And the hadith of the Prophet sallam says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests people based on their level of faith, based on their level of iman, and that the people who are tested most are the prophets, and then after them, those who are, you know, next to them in, in you know, after them in iman. And so the concept of tests being a punishment needs to completely be unlearned. And when we do that, I think we can we can encounter it in a better way, uh, that, that as long as any kind of hardship any kind of pain, any kind of test that we encounter, if it brings us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that is actually a blessing for us. It's actually a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because ultimately what matters in the end is whether or not we are getting closer to our ultimate purpose or we're getting farther from our ultimate purpose. Anything that will bring me closer to my purpose is good for me. And so even if that means a loss in the material sense, it's still good for me. And the other way around is also true that anything that brings me farther away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brings me farther away from my ultimate purpose, no matter what kind of increase in worldly increase it is, it's not, it's, it's actually bad for me. It's actually, um, you know, it's not, it's, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a blessing. In fact, it's the opposite. And so we have to start to re, you know, reorient the way we see, uh, you know, success and failure and, 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 um, and hardship and, and good and bad. We have to recalibrate, uh, you know, this, our whole definition, you know, of, of these things and of these concepts. And part of doing that, uh, what that will do is it will make it much easier to encounter a uh, hardship. And, and instead of seeing it as either um, a punishment or a sign that Allah is displeased with us, we can actually start to see it as a blessing that if, if this, if this hardship that I'm encountering is bringing me closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if it's, if it's purifying me, if it's making me a better person, um, it's building my character, then it's the, and then it's a blessing. Uh, and, and when we do that, we can start to um, really, you know, use, have the pain or have the hardship or have the, you know, whatever test that we're, we're going through, have it do its purpose uh, because it is sent for a purpose. And and part of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran is لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجَعُونَ Allah says that he sends, uh, you know, hardship and, and tests and calamity and, and, and these, these types of things to the nations in order that they will come back to us, in order that we come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the reason he sends it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about other reasons why uh, he sends pain or, or sends hardship or tests. And one of the other reasons is 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 to do the process, a process called tamhis. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لِيُمَحِصَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا That this process called tamhis means um, to purify. Uh, to purge and it's actually the same word that's used uh, to describe what happens to gold in order to purify it uh, we know that in order to purify gold we have to heat it up right and what happens when you heat up gold is that it removes the impurities from the gold and it's the same thing with us our our hearts our insides are full of impurities 
all of us. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, out of his mercy and love for us, he wants to purify us. And so one of the ways that we are purified is through these types of, of hardships. And this is something we all sit back and reflect on in our own lives of how sometimes the hardest times in our lives were the times when we actually felt closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqooni qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum inna ghafoonu rahim subhanakallahu bahamdak nashadu an la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruk wa natubu ilayk wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.